Hi everyone, um, I'm Lisa Wolfe. Um, I'm an artist. Uh, in my previous life, I was a technology trainer and also technology project manager. And I have an unhealthy interest in um, social media. Um, I also, uh, I'm going to mention a lot of company names um, today and artists and things like that. I'm not affiliated with anybody except for Art Est Art School, which um, I gave everyone who came in just a flyer about a professional development series. Um, the reason I gave you that is that I'm going to try and keep this seminar today to um, one hour. Normally I would do this seminar over two hours because there's quite a lot to um, fill in. So I will actually be running this again um, in March um, over the full two hours if you wanted to come along to that. And there's some other professional development seminars in March as well at Art Est. Um, so what I'm going to run through with you today is hopefully to demystify somewhat um, artist websites. I'm assuming most of you are artists or something like that, maybe gallery owners, something like that. Um, how to create an artist website, what, what you need to do to go about creating your own artist website and maintaining it yourself. And then I'll talk about social media and how you as an artist might use it to um, either enhance your profile or to find out information um, that will, that's going to help your, um, your development, your professional development. Um, so what I've given you is two sets of notes. Um, those of you who are streaming um, online, um, I'll provide those notes to Eliza. And I guess if you could get in contact with Eliza, she'll be able to send those through to you. Um, they're pretty comprehensive notes. These are from the two-hour seminar, so you get all my knowledge um, in those notes. Uh, there's not a lot of room for taking notes in there because it's quite a lot crammed in. Um, <clears throat> but um, my contact details are also there, and I'm happy to take questions today or as you um, go on your technology journey. Um, I'll probably keep the questions though maybe until the end of this seminar because I, I suspect that I'll probably cover, because I've done it a few times and I suspect I'll probably cover a lot of your questions. Um, so because we're trying to keep it to an hour, I, I might just take them at the end if that's okay. So maybe just take a note of anything that doesn't make sense. Um, right, so um, websites for artists. Um, there's a couple of things that you need, and I've listed those here. First of all, you need a PC or a laptop, so you need some means of accessing the internet. You need your web browser, so Internet Explorer or Firefox, um, some sort of web browser. You need internet access, obviously. You'll need a, an email address, um, an email address that you check regularly. Um, and you'll also need images of your work that are web ready. And I tend to find that this is where people start to think, oh, this is all too hard, I'm just going to give up on this. So I will spend a little bit of time talking about that. Um, I would say that for your website, you'll also need a little bit of time. Um, if you're pretty technology savvy, you can knock it over in a few hours. Um, if you're a little bit slower, maybe set, a, set aside a little bit of time, uh, say a couple of days. Um, to get your website up and running and get your images ready. Um, <clears throat> so they're the things that you will need, you will absolutely need. There's a few things that you might just want that are not absolute essentials. And the things that you might want are your own domain name. So your domain name, if you um, can have a look up there, your domain name is just the name of the website. So for example, I own a domain name, lisawolf.com, so I purchased that. You might want that. You don't have to have that. You can still have an artist website without owning your domain name. Um, you might want e-commerce, which is a fancy pants way of being able to sell your work online. You might not want that. You might want the option for it in the future. But these are just things to think about. Um, you might want website statistics, particularly if you are selling your work online. You might want to know how many people are hitting your website, how, many people, how they're getting to your website, um, what search terms are they putting into their search engine to find your website. So that might be something that you also want. 
Um, you might also want um, a very fancy term called search engine optimization, SEO. You might have seen that around. Um, that is uh, the uh, search engine opt optimization is a term to optimize, uh, sorry, to enhance uh, your website coming up in search in, in searches in search engines. And I'll come back to that a little bit. So those things that under the what you might want tend to be um, the wants or needs for people who want to sell their work online. Um, so, or they have something to sell online, be it their work or something else. A while ago, I had a website where I, I sold um, limited edition um, digital prints of work. So I, I, used, I used all of those tools to sell my work online. Okay? Um, <clears throat> so the other thing I just wanted to talk about also before you start with, with all of this is um, think about, the other thing you should do is think about what makes a website, an artist's website, look professional. Okay, so think about the websites that you see that are easy to navigate, um, that display the artist's work well. Um, and uh, I think one of the things, particularly with artists and photographers' websites, it's important to think that on the website your work should speak for itself. You know, it should be the feature. Not really a lot of words necessarily, but your work is the most important thing. So on that point, I've picked out a couple of artist websites who I think, which I think are, are really... Um, oops, that's not showing up there. Um, is it there now? No. <laughs> uh, a few artist websites um, that I think work particularly well because they feature the work. Um, now, a few of these artists... I'll just keep talking while they sort the technology out. A few of the art, these artists sell their work online, but mostly what they're doing is they're just providing a means for people, if they're looking for this particular artist, they've been to a show, they can look them up. And I, I have to say that that's one of the things that I, I find interesting, is that uh, I'll go to a show, a group show, for example, uh, or I might you know, go to a prize or something like that, and I think, oh, gee, I really like that artist's work. And the first thing I do, because I'm just you know, I'm technologically minded as I Google them. If I can't find them, I think they really should have a website. Um, but there's plenty of people that, that you know, you, you can find and it's great when they, when they do. So it's still not coming up? No? Okay. I'll just skip over that oh, bit. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> we'll just move on to the next bit. Um, so I'll come back to show you those websites that I think work particularly well. But before you start, I think it is important to really sit down and think about what you, what you want from your website. Do you want to sell your work online? Who's your target market? Is it, just, um, uh, is it just your friends? Is it just people who want to see your work? Are you wanting to feature your work, show galleries your work? So you, you really need to think about that. So, and, and think about whether or not you want to sell your work up front. Is it commissions that you're doing for people? You, know, you might do portrait commissions or something like that. Um, or you might be selling did, uh, limited edition prints. So it's worthwhile just spending you know, half an hour just thinking, well, what is it that I want from my website? Because you're going to invest some time in it. Um, so it's worthwhile. Because what I did was that I needed a website really fast. Um, I was doing a show and I thought, I've got to have a website. So I did a did a very basic website, and it was fine for the length of the show, but I quickly found that, no, actually, I needed a lot more from it. So had I just spent half an hour thinking about it beforehand, I would have saved myself a lot of time and trouble. Um, so it's worthwhile just thinking about it. Um, and uh, just one thing to think about that is, is, is that if you are selling your work online, just building a website won't mean that people will start buying your work you need to remember that you've got to have a marketing plan. You've got to do all the other things that you've got to do if you're selling anything. So don't just think, if, you, if I build a website, they will come. Um, you know, you've, you've still got to have a marketing plan. A website is just part of, part of your marketing plan. So I just wanted to reiterate that. Um, <clears throat> one of the things, I'll just go back to talking about um, the web-ready images. And I, I, as I said, I think this is, some, this is where sometimes I notice that there is a bit of confusion with people. So what I mean by web-ready is a few key things, is that you've got good quality images of your work. So good quality being it's not blurry. 
um, it's cropped well, so there's not bits of, you know, the wall behind it. Um, it's straight, <laughs> so it's not, you know, sort of taken on an easel and you can still see the easel around it and you've, it's all crooked, that sort of thing. Um, and it's a, a technical term called 72 DPI, which is 72 dots per inch, and I'm going to come back to that. And it's at least 500 dots per inch wide. Okay, so as an extra bonus piece of information, what I've got for you on page, uh, uh, in your notes, on page six, I have an appendix which is labelled getting your images web ready. Okay? So, um, oh, sorry, before we talk about it. Okay, cool, right. Um, Sorry, we'll just flip back to page four, beg your pardon. Um, so cropped, not blurry, straight. That all um, presupposes you're taking photos of your work. Um, I'm not a photographer. Um, I don't hold myself out to be a photographer. However, on page four, I have written some top tip, top, sorry, not page four, beg your pardon. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Page seven, beg your pardon, photographing your artwork, is some tips on how to photograph your artwork properly. Now, a lot of you might know this already, but um, you may not. If you can't afford to get a professional photographer to take photos of your work, or you don't know someone who'll do it on the cheap, and you need to do it yourself, um, then I suggest um, that you take, your, take photos of your artwork outside in an even light, in the morning or afternoon, not at the height of the day, maybe in the shade. Use a tripod, set your camera up on the tripod um, and set your artwork up on a sturdy surface, surface that's quite flat, um, so on an easel that's up flat. Um, don't use the flash on your camera. Um, avoid using the auto white balance on your camera. Use the correct white balance, so if you're in the shade, select shade. If you're in the daylight, select daylight. Um, don't Take, avoid taking photos of your artwork that are already behind glass. Take the photos before you get them framed. Um, take a few photos because the first one might be blurry. Check it. Zoom in on it on your camera and check it. Is it blurry before you take it off your camera and put it, put it onto your PC? And try to get your camera as straight as possible using your tripod. Um, but if you can't get it really straight, you can, you, you can do a few tricks in Photoshop to straighten your um, images. Um, and take, if you've got a manual camera, um, take, take the photo on the highest possible setting so it's the biggest possible um, image size so that when you download it onto your PC, you've got a, you know, a high resolution image. Um, so they're the top tips. So the, I've put a couple of links in, in this, um, which are a couple of really good websites for taking better photos of your artwork specifically. Um, and then, sorry, going back to page six, um, I've put in a little tutorial on how you can use Photoshop to straighten your images. Um, if you've got Photoshop, Photoshop is a very expensive product, and as we've probably seen the ACCC are looking into why Adobe are charging us far more here in Australia than they are overseas for these products, um, but that's beside the point. Uh, if you don't have Photoshop, there's two other products that I would recommend. One is called GIMP and another one is called Picasa. Both are free. You can download them to your PC and you can straighten your images in those. Okay, so they're both, the tutorials there is for Photoshop as I mentioned, but Picasa and GIMP are quite easy to use as well. And you can just straighten them up. You can crop them in all of those products. And that, that's what um, the cropping and the, uh, that I've put in there. Whatever product you use once you get it off your PC, you need to change the image size, as I mentioned, to 72 DPI, so 72 dots per inch. And what that does is reduces the actual file size of it. It's quite important to do that for the web because if your images are real, if 300 DPI or bigger or, you know, huge images, they take a long time to download. Um, and that is frustrating for the person viewing it because they've just got to sit there twiddling their thumbs and until we all get, um, you know, our national broadband and get all fast internet, you know, we will be waiting for it for a long time. Um, 
So that's, that's important. And on page seven is also how to change the image size in Photoshop. You just simply go to the image menu and choose image size and change it to 72 dots per inch. Another little tip for you is that what I always do is I take the images off my camera, I put them onto my PC, and they're my original images. I don't touch them again. I then take a copy of them, and I put them into a separate folder on my PC for website, and that's where I, resi and I resize all those copies. Okay? That way I keep everything nice and separate. I'm not fiddling around with my... Um, original images, I can always go back to it because you kick yourself, if you sell something, you can't get another photo of it, it's really annoying. Anyway, so we'll just go back to the <laughs> to this, there we go. Um, so this is a really nice website I like, some of you might know Bruce Latimer, he's a printmaker. Um, <clears throat> it features his work, okay, so it got a nice feature of his image. He's lucky enough to be married to uh, a photographer, so he takes photos of all his work and they're all beautifully photographed. Um, you see how lovely there's no ed you know, crooked edges, that sort of thing. Um, and the thing that works nicely about this is that I can see whose who's, um, website it is, it's Bruce Latimer's. I get an introduction to the type of work that he does. And down the bottom I can clearly see menu items and I can clearly find what I'm looking for. Home is where I am. I can go to his works. I can look at his bio. I can look at a few other bits of information. Most importantly, I can find his contact details right away. Okay? So I go to his works. Um, <clears throat> I think his wife did his website for him as well. Um, it's, uh, I can click on the first work. Um, I can see the work very clearly. It's nicely sized. Um, I can see the name, the edition, the size of the artwork, and then I can um, click next, and I can flick through each of his images. The only criticism I would have of this website is that I really don't like that little timer thing. I'd rather it go straight away. But, anyway, <laughs> um, but you can see that it's a really nice, slick website um, that features his work. When I go to his bio, um, see a picture of Bruce, and I can very easily slide down and see his bio. So if I've been to his show, I can Google him, find him straight away, I can find out everything about him, and I can see all his works. And I think that that's the style of website that works really well for an artist. Um, so have a look at artist websites. I used to have a list of websites that I would show as bad artist websites. Thankfully, they're all gone now. Um, <laughs> those ones that I did have are now much improved, you know, um, that there were a couple of galleries that had really dodgy websites that had links that didn't go anywhere, images you couldn't see, you had to scroll all over the page, that sort of thing. But this is, a, a, I think, a nice website that shows, um, that as I said, just clearly shows his work. Um, which is, which is what it's all about. Um, then I can scroll through different galleries. And these are, these are called thumbnails. I see a thumbnail I like, I can click on it and, and pass through it. And as I mentioned, I can easily go to his contact details and I can find out where to contact him and how to contact him. So um, besides Bruce being one of my favorite teachers, I have no other affiliation with him, but his website's good. Um, okay. Uh, so, so I would encourage you to have a bit of a look around at different artist websites and, and see those. Um, so if we flip to page two of the um, papers that I've given you, what I'm going to talk to you first of all is ha creating an artist website for no cost. Um, so no outlay to you. <laughs> um, okay. So I've listed here um, some organisations uh, that, in, this is not an exhaustive list, but this is a list of organisations that you can um, go to their website and you can create yourself a portfolio for free. So um, DeviantArt is one of them, it sounds a bit deviant, but it's not, it's not honestly. Um, I can go to www.deviantart.com and I can create a profile for myself on there and I can upload my images. 
um, and uh, create a folio, a very simple um, folio that looks like this one. This is a very old folio that I created. Um, <clears throat> in there I've got my name, obviously, visual artist. I've got my homepage, artist bio, a bit about me, um, and some galleries which display my, some of my old paintings. So don't look at these. They're, not, they're old. Not what I do now. Um, so I've got... This is a nice little website. I literally created this in about an hour. Okay, after, sorry, after I've got my images ready to upload, I created it in an hour. Easy. Um, and, you know, as I said, it, it, it's, it's quite a nice... It features the work. Um, it's a lim it has limitations because it's free. And all of these um, companies that I've listed here, they have limitations because they're free. They're not going to give you everything for nothing. The limitations uh, that I've, I've identified are that because it's uh, free, you're limited in the amount of customization that you can do. So I can't fiddle around too much with this website. I can't change the background colours too much. I can't, um, uh, uh, I can't add a lot of text to it. Um, so, for example, artist bio, that's, that's all I'm limited to. I'm limited to just a couple of paragraphs. I think it's about 250 characters or something like that. Um, I can just put a few bits of information about my qualifications and I can create a link to my CV. But that's fine, you know, that's not too bad. Um, generally speaking, well, absolutely, you won't be able to sell your work from a free website. They won't give you that option. All it is is a, a visual gallery. Um, you may, a big disadvantage of some of these is that you may get ads on your website that you don't want. So they've got to, because they've got to generate income somehow. So they might place ads at the bottom of your page um, that you don't want to see. Um, also, you're generally limited to the, to the number of galleries that you can upload. So in this particular one, I've got the option of creating four galleries to show my work. So I can divide my work up into paintings, drawings, prints and mixed media, for example. But I can't do ten galleries. Um, and you also have a, a limit to the total amount of um, space you can use. So that might mean that uh, you know, you're limited to a few megabytes of space, which m limits how many images you can put up there. Okay. So DeviantArt is one of those. The other big thing about it is that you can't use... You'll notice that the URL that's up there, you can't use your own domain name. So I can't use lisawolf.com. I get lisawolf.daportfolio.com. So that's my web address. OK? Um, so they're the, the disadvantages of it. But as I said, up and running really fast. No, no problem at all. So DeviantArt is um, an American-based company. I think it's American, but it's not Australian. There is an Australian-based company called Online Galleries. Um, so because they're Australian, by Australian, you should probably use them if you're going to use it. <laughs> um, so Australia, uh, Online Galleries is a little company um, run out of Victoria, I think, and you can create yourself create your own website. See, he says it right there. And there's 3,846 happy customers. Um, and I'll just click on features. No, sorry, pricing plans. I can create um, an online galleries light. So if I click over, over here, which is free. So it costs me nothing per month. There is no setup fee, no contract length. length. I'm limited to about 40 images. I can have uh, two galleries, so that's uh, the domain is not included, so I can't um, use my own domain name. So basically, this list tells you the things that you can and can't do for, for free. And then if you do decide to pay, which I'll get to in a second, um, you can see that you've got a few more options, and then if you pay more, you've got all the options available to you. So for um, online galleries, um, free. I don't get um, uh, password protected galleries, which is probably only for photographers. 
I don't get um, Google Analytics, which means statistics. Um, so I don't know how people got to my website. Um, I don't get a watermark tool, which I'll come back to in a second. Um, I don't get my website backed up. So that means that he leaves out my images from his backup plan. So if something were to happen to his server, he'd say, oops, sorry, but you only used the free option and you knew that you were going to lose it. Um, so that's, that's that. So, uh, so watermark, I'll just mention that now. Um, watermark tool is a tool where you have your image and across the top of it, you've probably seen stock photos. Across the top of it, it has stock image or it has a copyright notice. Um, you can do that in Photoshop. Um, you can do that in a few other things. Copyright's a whole other topic. I think there's someone going to be speaking about copyright in a couple of weeks. <laughs> um, so I'm not really going to go there. But um, yeah, it's a whole other topic. Um, so to show you how easy this all can be, you can all go home, all of you can go home and create a, a gallery uh, using online galleries, uh, pricing plans. sign up and the great thing about this tool and DeviantArt is the same it's um, what I call follow the bouncing ball it's called, it's a wizard and it tells you each step exactly what you have to do so I create myself a username so the username it's important to pick a good name not you know pixie fairy floss because that's going to be your um, website address so I would choose your name probably um, or a variation on it. I think I've, I've done this a few times and so I think he's probably sick of me um, creating these. <laughs> so the, <clears throat> and you can see there it shows what my website URL will be. And the email address, <clears throat> as I mentioned, for all of these things you will need a valid email address. And yes, I've read the terms and conditions but nobody ever does, do they? Um, <laughs> create your website. Yes. 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 Is it possible to have an email address that this is a technical question, non technical, that will actually divert to your Gmail so that you don't have to look up to your email? Um, yes. It is, but you would have to pay for that privilege with Gmail or Yahoo. So you can have a, you can't, say you've got a Yahoo account, Yahoo email account. If you go into your Yahoo account, um, you've got an option of forwarding your emails. You can forward your emails to an, another um, account, but you generally would have to pay for that. Yeah. Yep, gotcha. And yep. Then it go, you want to convert it to your normal Gmail. So yep. you go to Gmail for a range of No, no. Very technical question. All doable. Can I talk to you at the end? Because so <laughs> that, it's doable. Yep. Thanks. Yep. Um, okay, so now I've created my website. My username is that username, and my password is this password here. Now, Mac. Max, I get confused with Max, copy. Um, I go to my admin area. Oops, can't spell my own name. What do I call myself, Lisa J? And very helpfully, I get to run the setup wizard. So I can run the setup wizard, and he tells me in seven steps how to set up my gallery, how to set up my website. So I enter the name for my gallery, e.g., my paintings. So click next. I upload my images. I'm not going to do that. Um, this isn't my PC, I can't do it, but click for browse, browse for images. Um, and I choose the images that I've put in my special image folder that are all 72 DPI and you know the drill. Oh, how do I get back? Ooh. Oh, 
I don't know what this is. Lucky you. <laughs> Abort upload. Yes, I won't embarrass you. <laughs> um, upload my images. Um, he very helpfully tells me um, that my images should be around 1,000 1, pixels wide, but you know it can be 500 to 1,000. Click on Next. Um, enter my contact details. Produce all so far so good, it's all straightforward. I'm not going to enter them just for the purpose of brevity. Click on Next. Do I want a particular image on my homepage? Uh, no, I'll just. Or do I want to, sorry, do I want a particular message? That's where I can tell people all about me, how great I am, how many prizes I've won, you know, that sort of thing. Um, what image would I like on my homepage? Um, I'm not going to do that. That will really embarrass everybody. Um, and I'll click on launch site. And in that very short space of time, even though I haven't got any images, hey presto, I have a website with a homepage. If I had have entered some details there, it would be there. I'd have my galleries listed. My, uh, my, I've got paintings galleries. And this is actually quite a nice, um, it's a really nice layout that um, this chap has done. It's very, it's very slick, it's very um, clean. Um, <coughs> And I've got my contact details so everybody can find me and send me an email. Um, now, this is a couple of the things that are a bit of a nuisance. There's these, this information down here, which I don't really want, but I'm stuck with it because I've used the free option. Um, and I've also got this information down here. Again, I'm stuck with it because I've got the free option. Um, yeah, so all, all very straightforward. Now, you can um, have a look at online galleries as well. And he will have his clients. Um, and you can have a look at the different clients' websites. Now, this person's paid for the privilege of, um, of being able to customise their website, but haven't customised it too I haven't customised it too much, but Home page. This gives you the overall uh, look and feel of the websites that you, you get here. So home page about the galleries. So this person's got lots of different galleries that they can choose. But I'll just go to paintings and you can see that um, it just shows thumbnails down the bottom and then at the top it has um, the full image. Okay. So it's quite a nice, nice, easy way to do it. So in those seven steps, website created, pretty easy. You can all do that. You can all go home and do it. Yes. Yes, yes, you can. Yes, truly. There's lots of other options as well. As I said, this isn't this is, the list that I've given you of free websites is not an exhaustive list. Um, if you Google, if you to Google and Google free artist websites, you'll come up with a whole bunch of them. But you know, you've got Saatchi Online, uh, Wix, you've got theloop.com.au, artistswebsites.org. You could even use Tumblr. Some of you might have heard of Tumblr, or perhaps you've got a Tumblr, web, a Tumblr page, which is actually more of a blogging page. Um, Squidoo, <coughs> Blogspot, WordPress. There's a, there's a lot of options for freebies. Okay. So is that all? Am I speaking gibberish? <laughs> yes. Yes. So I can go home tomorrow, the free website, and just delete it off your system. And this guy actually sends emails every quarter to all his free website users and ask if you'd like to keep it or not. So he just, because he just wants to clear it out, so yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so if we flip over to page three is um, the low cost options. Um, so what I, if, if you put into your Google search engine websites for artists, you'll come up with a whole bunch of options for websites for artists. Um, I've chosen one, two, three, four, five of those many, 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 many websites that you can choose from. Um, and I've uh, looked at the types of things that an artist would want from their website and I've kind of given them a rating. 
Um, now, as I said, I'm not affiliated in any way with these people, um, but my top pick is a company called ClickPick, which is C-L-I-K-P-I-C, which is a, a London-based company, and they're the um, crew that I use for my website. Um, the reason I use them is that um, they're a smallish company, but they're great cost. Per annum, it's $60 Australian per annum. Um, it's very easy to use, so simple to set up. They have an excellent, excellent user guide, which takes you step by step through. It's not a wizard like the one I just showed you, but it's, it, you could just print it out and step by step go through and how to set up your website. They include fabulous information about how to um, get your images ready, um, how to do a whole lot of other uh, thing, you know, extra information that you know, they don't really need to provide. There is lots and lots of customization options. So for that $60 a year, I can customize my website to with an inch of its life, or I can just use the really nice slick templates that they have. Um, so they have a, a lot of templates that are, are designed, and they created this um, product specifically for photographers. So with photographers in mind, and photographers, it's all about the image. With photographers in mind, they set up these really nice, clean templates that, that you can use and just choose from. It's very easy to choose a template. If you get sick of using that template, you can choose to a diff move to a different template. Um, you can, you've got the option to um, set up e-commerce, so you can sell your work via your website using PayPal. Um, it's got a very simple method of getting web statistics um, and you can also buy your domain name through them as well. So it's a one-stop shop for all of those things. And the reason it gets the five out of five as well is because it's, I think it's value for money. Um, so all of these other, the four others that I've put there have all, also have those options and, um, but you know, they're a lot more expensive, um, and, and I'm thinking about, you know, doing, trying to do this on a, on a, you know, budget, not wanting to spend thousands of dollars on getting a designer to do it. Um, <clears throat> and they're also really helpful. Um, if you send, even though they're in the UK, if you send them an email with a question, they get back to you overnight. So, you know, that's, they're really, really good. The next one down is Folio Link. That's also an excellent website. If you're a, a, um, an, a, a sorry, an excellent product. If you're, uh, especially if you're a multimedia artist, you want to put up a lot of videos. I'd really recommend Folio Link. The reason it doesn't quite meet the top criteria is because it is, you can see, it's a lot more expensive. It's two hundred and forty dollars per annum versus the sixty dollars per annum. Plus, there's a hundred and fifty dollar registration fee just for signing up. So that's, you know, it's. So if you've got a bigger budget and you want something, you can check that out. But the good thing about both of those is that they have a free trial period. So you can sign up, get a 14-day trial, create a website, have a bit of a look around. You don't get all the options that you know, are available if you pay, but you can see whether it meets your needs. And I'd really encourage you to use that 14-day free trial because you know, at the end of the 14 days, they just delete it and it's no, no love lost and your images aren't there or anything like that. Um, but it's a, it's a good way to just see whether or not it's, it's for you. Um, then the third one down is online galleries, which is what I just talked about, which is the Australian company. Um, and instead of using the free option, you, you, you can pay a monthly fee to use uh, to, to get more customization. So it's, it's very similar to what, I, to what I just showed you. But they come down a bit in the list because it's $49, sorry, $49 per month, which is quite expensive. Um, and I think he's just a small operation and so it costs him to do it and that's why it costs so much. Then the last one down, I mentioned before, Deviant Art. If you pay 30, uh, $25, I think, per annum, you get... Um, a very simple, um, you, you get the website that I just showed you, the DeviantArt website that I just showed you, um, which was my old work. You get that, but the $25 essentially means that instead of having um, lisawolf.da portfolio, I can have lisawolf.com. Okay, so that's what the $25 pays for, <laughs> is that. 
Um, so a couple of friends of mine have um, Jan Handle. She uses DeviantArt, so she uses janhandle.net. Um, and her, her, she's got no complaints about using DeviantArt, paying her $25, except that she, can't, she has a limited amount of images that she can upload. So her $25 doesn't buy her a lot of space, so she's just got to keep on top of it. And the other reason I bring up Jan, um, janhandle.net is just to talk about domain names, because I've just talked about domain names and not everybody might know exactly what I'm talking about or how to purchase one. Um, so Jan, just this couple, a little word of warning, if you've got a very common name, buy your website and buy your domain name now. Um, Jan got pipped to the post by Yarn Handle somewhere else, who bought yarnhandle.com um, and yarnhandle.com.au, so she had to purchase janhandle.net. Um, does, does anyone have their own domain name? Does anyone want to know how to buy it? You do? Yeah, yeah. You all want to know how to buy it? Okay. <laughs> um, <clears throat> lucky for you, uh, on... Uh, da -da 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 -da, where is it? Oh, uh, page seven of the notes I gave you, Appendix 3, Purchasing a Domain Name, is some tips about how you can purchase your domain name. Um, you purchase a domain name from a, um, <clears throat> a domain name registrar, and these are literally a dime a dozen, they're everywhere. There's so many of them. Um, <clears throat> I use a company called GoDaddy, which is a US-based company, but there's others that you can use. Um, I've listed a couple there. Net Registry is one, and Aussie HQ is another. Melbourne IT that I put there, they've actually not they're not in business anymore, so just cross them out because they did something very naughty and anyway. Um, <laughs> so Aussie HQ is one, Net Registry, um, GoDaddy, there's, there's lots of them. Cheap domains, yep. Yeah. It's a matter of um, shopping around because normally your domain name, you have to pay an annual fee to own your domain name. I think GoDaddy I pay, you know, something like $12 or something like that to own it annually. Um, and then other companies, cheap domains, I think they sell them for $10 or something like that annually. But you still have, you have to pay an annual fee to, to own it. Um, <clears throat> what you, with any of them, you go, you go to cheap domains or GoDaddy and you enter your, um, the domain name you would like to buy. So, anybody want to enter their name? Anybody, anybody? Shout out name, John Smith, okay. Beg your pardon? <laughs> E L K E W O H Yep. Yep. Oh, T. Okay. So, um, elkewolfhart.com. So I click on search, and that enables me to see whether or not that name is available. Congratulations, it is. <laughs> <coughs> Um, and you need to snap it up before anybody else does. Um, <laughs> so um, it tells you, yes, it's available, or it says, sorry, you, it's not available, somebody else already owns it. Um, now, just because somebody owns that domain name doesn't mean they're actually using it. So some, what people do is as soon as somebody gets famous on one of those um, you know, reality TV shows, I don't know, somebody, I don't know, like Lara Bingle, for example, right? So as soon as Lara Bingle got famous, somebody probably bought larabingle.com.au and they, what, they, they sit on it and then they wait for Lara Bingle to say, I want to buy it, and then they charge Lara Bingle an extortionate amount of money to buy it. So that's kind of what happens, but anyway. Um, <clears throat> so it tells you that and then it tells you that you can also buy not only .com, you can buy .net, .org, .info, .all the dots about the place, um, and this is a new thing to GoDaddy, um, that you can now buy .com.au, which AU is, means it's Australia. GoDaddy used to be, it didn't sell AU domain names previously, you'd have to go through a different company, but now you can purchase .com and .au all at once, and they bundle them up, and as you can see there, it's just $9.99 per year and bundle it up. And then you, you just buy it, put your credit card details in, sign your life away, you own it, you can do whatever you like with it. Yes? Would you recommend Look, it really, I was having this discussion today, it's, to me it's neither here nor there. 
I happen to use .com. I don't really know why I chose .com. <laughs> um, but if you're an Australian-based company, I would go with .com.au because um, that's what people are used to typing in if they're looking for an Australian-based company. Um, I would tend to go with .com and I would probably buy .com.au because you can, what you can do is redirect. So if somebody does search for .com.au, they just get redirected to .com. So you can, own, you can own them all. You can own every Elka Wolfhart variation and they can all go to the one website. Okay, so. So you can buy your website from one of these providers, cheap, cheap domains, etc. But with um, ClickPick, which is the company I mentioned before, and FolioLink, you can also, when you sign up, you can buy the domain name through those companies. They just charge a small premium because they buy it off someone like GoDaddy and then add a little bit on for them. So it's six or one, half a dozen the other. It's, sometimes it's easy just to have everything all in one place then everything um, rolls over at the same time and you don't have to worry about, you know, paying per annum one thing and then paying another thing. So, but that's as easy as it is to get a domain name. And, I, and as an artist, as a visual artist, I'd, I'd probably encourage you to buy your domain name. You might as well. You, you don't have to use it, but you might as well buy it um, because you never know. You never know what's going to happen. Someone might charge you... Try and charge you hundred thousand dollars to buy it off you, or for you to buy it off them. You never know. You might be Andy Warhol. I don't know. So I, I think time's going to preclude me from going through ClickPick um, in any great detail, except to say that you know it, it is. It's very, very, very easy to use. You can go to the ClickPick website um, and you can have a look at all the customers' websites for free. So you can, as I said, it's, it's really geared towards photographers and it's very simple. It's, it, all the, the menus are across the top. You can choose where to put them. Um, I'll just, I'm not advertising myself, but, you know, I'll do it anyway. Um, <coughs> um, so I just have it very simple kind of like the way Bruce had it, but with, you know, my menus across the top, my home, my artworks, about me, how to contact me, workshops that I run, other news, and I do some curatorial work. So people can find out everything they want to know about me if they're looking for me. And I've got my artworks divided up into two separate galleries of paintings. And I've got thumbnails of all my paintings. I've got lots of space to put information about me and my paintings and that particular project. I go to works on paper, I can then divide up my works on paper into different projects. It's just how I choose to do it. Um, and then it's all fairly, you know, so, and then I've got information about selling it. Um, if I did have PayPal integration, you could click buy now on it, but I haven't set that up. So, but anyway, users, uh, people viewing it can just flick through and see everything. So it's, it's, quite a, it's quite slick without having to pay a lot of money for it. If you did want to sell your work online, because I'm super generous, in one of these appendices is how to set up your PayPal merchant, um, merchant account on page 9 how to set up your PayPal merchant account, go into PayPal so you can take payments through PayPal. Okay, so that means that people can just, they'll, they'll click on a Buy It Now link, it diverts them across to PayPal and then PayPal deals with the um, Visa card, MasterCard, whatever card. I simply pay a percentage of the purchase price to PayPal. If I was selling volume, though, um, you can set up a business account. I think it's... Yeah, sorry, it's a business account where you pay a, an amount based on, you know, a large volume. So you pay a, a, a fee. It's all laid out there on the PayPal thing. But, um, sorry, that's a Premier account you can set up. Or if you were that serious, I'd be going to your bank and sorting something out with your bank to, to do your e-commerce facilities. If, if you were selling that much volume, I wouldn't do it via PayPal probably. 
Um, but it's, you know, it's very simple to set up just a personal PayPal business account. And I, if you are selling your work, I, I'd really recommend you do that as well, um, even if it's not via your website, because it's a really nice, quick way to send somebody an invoice um, so somebody that's seen your work somewhere and they say they want to pay by MasterCard or something, you can go, once you've got this set up, you can go in and create an invoice in there, send them an invoice, and they can just do their payment through PayPal. Um, so it's probably worthwhile setting it up anyway. Um, just if, if you're, you know, a seller of your work. Um, uh, as I mentioned, ClickPick, you know, if I... I Another website that I have that I had that I no longer had, I customised it completely. So I completely turned it around. I put all sorts of branding on it. So ClickPick gave me, for $40 a year, gave me the ability to customise it because I had a little bit of know-how of web design. I knew how to, how to do that. So it's, it's, it's built for people with not much know-how or a lot of know-how. So you can do both. Okay. So, yeah, as I said, I don't have anything to do with them except that. Um, so, so all the, as I said, all the information about everything I've talked about and more is in these pages. <coughs> um, but, you know, time, I, I need to move on to the social media sort of stuff. Um, my contact details are there as well, so I'm happy to take questions outside of this as well. That's no problem. Um, so we'll just, I did another quick handout for social media and I'll just talk about that. And what I'm going to focus on here is social media's uses for, uses for social media for an artist. Now I used to be really, really, I oh, so loved Facebook. Facebook was the best thing ever, but I'm, I got sick of it very, very quickly, I have to say. But there are good reasons to be on social media. Um, I had an exhibition recently. Oh, sorry, there's a good. Sorry, there's really good reasons as an artist to have a web profile, be it social media, website, all those sorts of things. I had a, an exhibition recently. I was manning it sometimes, but not all the time. But I got at least five people contacting me after the exhibition who Googled me and either contacted me through my website, through Facebook, through LinkedIn, and through a few other means. So they were able to find me because I had those things all set up. Now, I might not be particularly active on them, but it's a means for people to find you. Um, so I've kind of like rebranded this part of the social media thing as kind of the good, bad and the ugly. Um, so there are some really good reasons to be on there, and that's one of them. People can find you. Um, we Look, we live in an online... Actually, does anybody have Facebook? On Facebook, you're on it. Yeah, driving you mad yet? No. <laughs> you love it. Yeah. Um, as an artist, some, <clears throat> someone somewhere will be talking about something that is of interest to you. <laughs> so there, there is actually a lot of information if you can wade through all the rubbish. Um, <clears throat> it's a good way to find lots of opportunities. I've found loads of opportunities via social media. Um, there's opportunities to connect with people, connect directly with people that you possibly would never have connected with before. I'm Facebook friends with loads of artists who I would who have never met, who I, whose work I like. I want to be in contact with them on a personal level. I've been able to send the personal emails via Facebook asking them when their next workshop is, um, things like that. I had, I've created an, a nice link with another artist who happens to be just a very nice person, um, who, you know, has offered advice and all sorts of things. So it's, it, there are definite, definite advantages to it because every person and their dog is on Facebook, you know. So um, arts writers, galleries, um, <coughs> yeah, direct links to loads of art, arts writers, some of whom I've found, you know, at first you think, oh, I'm Facebook friends with blah, blah, and you think, um, I'd rather not be, thanks, you can get rid of you. Um, you know, but <clears throat> there are definite links. And there are opportunities to market and sell your work via these, these mechanisms. Um, <clears throat> but that's sort of another topic. But the bad and the ugly, everyone's on it. God, there's a lot of junk on it. Um, <laughs> there's, you know, people with their cats, dogs, what they're doing. Some nice artists, you know, 
I really don't care what their dog's doing. But you know, so, you know, so you know, some people use use it to an extent that's quite annoying. You know, it's too much information about them, about what they're doing, and all that sort of stuff. So you've really got to find ways of wading through it, or find ways of um, limiting your, you know, unhealthy obsession with it, like me. You know. <coughs> I do. I don't have a problem with doing that. <coughs> um, yep, absolutely. Um, so, so the question was, do I post my images on Facebook of my work? <coughs> I do. I know photographers who don't because there is um, some line in the terms and conditions of Facebook that says anything you post here is the own, belongs to Facebook. Look, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, doesn't bother me for my work. Um, but I can see for a photographer, yeah, that would be um, quite annoying. Um, and I know that there has been instances of Facebook themselves, you know, using people's photos, family photos in their advertising and things like that. So, you know, you, I think you need to self-moderate um, what you put on there. I think a lot of people don't. <laughs> um, <coughs> but I really think you, you, you do. I'll show you what I do. <laughs> um, <coughs> And, and if you're using Facebook as a business tool, um, some changes that have been made recently um, have completely changed the way businesses, um, I guess, integrate with Facebook. So we'll look at Facebook first because I think that's, the, that's probably the social media tool that most people are familiar with. But there are, God, there are so many of these things now. You know, there's Tumblr, there's Reddit, there's, there's everything under the sun. Now, I, I haven't put a lot of how-to information about Facebook in here because it becomes redundant really fast because they change the look of it very, very quickly and all the time. Having said that, they have an excellent um, help page um, so that if you are looking for how to do something, you can just go into their help page and have a look. Okay, so this is my Facebook page. God help me, what you might see. Who knows? Um, <laughs> Now, um, there are two ways to, to uh, use Facebook as an artist, is to use it as your personal page um, and just leave it at that, or to um, create a Facebook business page. And now, creating, technically, if you're running a business, you're supposed to use a business page. That's sort of the terms of use of Facebook. That's kind of what they said, but look, yeah, whatever. Um, so I have, I have my personal Facebook page. Now, on this page, I do everything. I don't personally have a, a separate artist page, okay? But I'm going to show you a, a page. Um, so <clears throat> those of you that are on Facebook would know that you can like a company on Facebook. Um, so that's a business page, right? So as I mentioned before, uh, not everyone is here. I am affiliated with Artist Art School. Um, I teach there, but I'm also an administrator of their page. Okay, so Artist Art School, being a business, has a Facebook page where our fans can like the page. So they click on like, and anything that Artist Art School posts on the Artist page comes up in their news feed. Okay, now if you wanted to create your own visual artist page, that's what you, this is what you would have. You would maintain a, um, a business page. So you have two Facebook? You have your personal, pro you must have a personal profile in order to create a page. Okay. So, um, another example of that is He's taken it down. See, people, they change things. Oh, um. <laughs> oh here we go. Okay. So Todd Fuller is a friend of mine. He's an artist. Um, so he has his personal page where he does all his personal stuff. But Todd also has a sculpture page for his personal, uh, for his, uh, oh, that's not my Todd, but anyway. <laughs> so... Let's just pretend it is. Um, 
So he has an artist page where he simply talks about his artwork. Okay? So he doesn't, he's, you know, he, he doesn't, on there, he doesn't see that, you know, Sophie and Zara have just turned one and blah, 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 or whatever it was. Oh, swimming lessons, swimming lessons, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay? So he maintains that for people who are interested in his artwork. So by all means, you, you can do that. It's very simple to do it. You come over here to Pages, click on More, and choose Create a Page. You choose the type of page it is. Are you an artist, band, public figure, entertainment cause? Are you a local business? And Derivan, Matisse Derivan, has a page as well. And you manage that page, don't you, Eliza? Yeah, yeah you're doing it right now. Um, <coughs> So it simply categorises into what sort of Facebook page you'd like. I'll, I'll go for artist around. So um, I choose what sort of artist I am. I'm a uh, artist artist. Um, <laughs> and um, I give it a name. So Lisa Wolf's um, fantastic artwork. Okay. So that differentiates me from my, per my personal page. I agree to the terms and conditions. I don't know what they say, but sure, why not? And again, it's very follow the bouncing ball. Facebook wants you to do this. They're going to make it easy for you, OK? So um, I simply, <coughs> uh, I'll skip that. It's uploading a profile picture. So if I've got branding or a logo, I can upload that, or one of my artworks. Um, Tell me all about yourself. So provide some information about Lisa Wolf's artwork. I can put links to my website. Will this represent a real celebrity? No. Um, this is my Facebook web address. Skip. Okay. Once I've created that, show support. Look, I've done something. Yeah. And then I start sharing information with, with all my fans, which I haven't got yet. Um, so at the moment, it's a one-way conversation that I'm having. So I now post information about my artwork up there. Now what I've got to do is get some, some likers, some fans. So first thing I'm going to do is tell all my friends. So I tell all my friends, like my page. They have no incentive to like my page, except to get more stuff from me. <laughs> so um, it's, 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 it, it has to be quite an organic thing. Um, so first of all, you tell your friends, and they all like the page. Um, now it's easier. I, I, f I used to have one of these, and I quickly got bored with it because I thought, well, yeah, great. It's all my actual friends like my artist page. Nobody knew likes it, or other artists. And uh, I just thought, oh, you know, it's a bit. It's probably a bit boring for them because I'm also Facebook friends with them. So it's it was now. You, so you've really got to think about whether or not it's, it's something that you need to do. Now, a lot of people do sell their work via their Facebook page. You can go to people and they can write applications for you, specifically for your Facebook page. So, but if you run a business like this one or, or like Art Est Art School, yeah, I, I would say definitely have a Facebook page. But as an artist, I think maybe think about it. I'm not saying don't do it, but I'm just saying sort of think about what it is you want to get from that. What it means to have 50,000 likes, I don't know what it means. <laughs> you know, so I, I'm sort of being a, a bit devil's advocate there because I actually don't really know what it means anymore. Sorry. <laughs> um, these pages are public. There's nothing you can do about that except being public. Okay. That's no, no. So. I, I, this is a really good segue into saying, please, 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 your personal page, review your security settings, okay? Um, so, what I'm just going to flip back to how I use Facebook as an artist. Um, yes. Yeah, sorry. Yes, you you have to do that. Somebody has to, has to have created that on behalf of Derivan. So, for example, the Art Est Art School one, I cre oh, sorry, Jennifer, who's the director, created it on, under her personal profile. But there's no link. A, a person from overseas would not see the link between the two. Okay? But there's nothing you can do about security settings for that Facebook fan page. Okay? It's public, and that's how it's designed to be. Everything you do on it is public. That means that people can, and there's all these furor that happens. You know, uh, Channel Seven, you know, show some 
something on there and somebody complains about it, it's there for everybody to see. Channel 7 can moderate that by deleting that, but that's really bad publicity for them if they moderate that because it's supposed to be a public thing. So people can write nasty, nasty things on your Facebook fan page, whereas on your personal page, they, you can restrict that. You can stop that from happening. Oh, sorry, you, you, you can restrict it on your Facebook page. You can stop them writing. You can stop anyone writing on your wall, but it kind of defeats the purpose of... Ha of, of of, uh, the purpose of it is to create a conversation, I guess. So you can have it set up to, to, to not have them write anything on it, but what you write is public. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you, you've got to self moderate on it. Yeah, yeah. And when I say, when I say, I take a photo Yeah. Yeah. You can do that. Yeah, you can do that. You can, when, you, when you do that, you can upload it and choose to put it on my personal profile or on my, my um, company profile. Yeah. <coughs> What's, uh, so, so people use their, their fan page for all sorts of things. Oh, sorry, I'll just go back to that. So I, I exhibit with um, two other people regularly. Um, and we created, we haven't done it for ages, but we created a page specifically for the three of us as an art group, okay? We don't use it much, <laughs> but, um, but, you know, that's, that's how we can promote exhibitions, that sort of thing. So there's, there's def you can have as many pages as you want. Um, and so there's definitely uses for it. But you've also got to think about, well, yeah, is it just my mates who like it? And so you need to think of it as part of a, a bigger marketing plan, how you use it as part of a bigger marketing plan. Yeah, exactly, and that's right, they can like it. And if you're selling something, you know, if you're selling commissions, portrait commissions, that sort of thing, I'd say definitely, you know, do this and create a link to it on your website. Like my page on Facebook, you can see what I've been doing. I would definitely, absolutely say that. So the, the art school, you know, it's obvious what we put on at the art school. We put on photos of, um, you know, the people doing their artwork in the classes. You know, we've got, we've got something to promote. Be aware, though, pay to promote is a new thing that Facebook have that's changed a whole bunch of things. Um, previously, when, um, <coughs> previously, when I would write something on Facebook's, on, on Art Est Art School's um, Facebook wall, it would go into everybody's news feed. So everybody who liked Facebook, uh, who liked that the art school would go into their news feed. But Facebook has changed the way that operates now. Um, and it, it previously, um, I'll just show you down here. Sorry, is that up there? So you see how it says 96 people saw this post down here? Um, whereas we have 484 likers, okay? Previ uh, up till probably the end of last year, um, that would have said, 300 people saw that post. But Facebook's changed the algorithm for how they show what's in people's news feed and they have kind of decided what's important <laughs> and what's not and they've got an algorithm that works it out and it's people that you integrate with a lot. So people who, you know, who, who I integrate with a lot tend to appear higher up on my news feed. Um, so I could be cynical and say the reason that they've done this is to make money. Um, because now what you can do is choose promote and I can pay to have that post promoted. So I pay $10 for 200 people to see that post, but I've got no idea how they actually make that happen. So, 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 I, can, so I can reach more people by promoting my posts, promote it to people who like my page or to promote it to those people and their friends. And those of you who are on Facebook might have noticed that you started to get more ads in your news feed. Yes. That's what this is all about. Okay? So if I choose to promote it to people who like my page and their friends, their friends who don't have any affiliation with Art Est Art School will start to see ads in their news feed. So it's changed, everything's quite, it's changed quite a lot. And those algorithms of what appears in the newsfeed are a very closely guarded secret of, um, you know, some people have done 
you know, tried to test it and all that sort of stuff, but it's a very closely guarded secret by, by Facebook of, of what would appear in a news feed. So, I, 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 to be honest with you, I, I've started to wonder about the value of having this sort of page now because, you know, really, does your target audience actually see it anymore? I don't think so. You know, so you, you have to take, sort of think about those sorts of things um, and think, well, by adding, you know, a monetary gain in it, of course it changes. You know, so, so you have to sort of think about, about those sorts of things. Yep. Turn. Oh, yes, I'm going to show you. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I, don't, I no longer have a Facebook artist profile page. I have a personal page and I use it in two ways. I have my friends. I, I interact with my friends in one way and I interact with people in the art world in a different way. Um, so <clears throat> what I've done is, first of all, in answer, I'll answer that question straight up. Um, okay, I c if Kelly is really annoying, she's a great friend of mine, but if she's really annoying me, <laughs> I can, and I don't want to, okay, there's a simple way to get rid of Kelly, defriend her, right? <laughs> it's harsh, harsh but fair, okay? Um, but if I don't want to go that far, I can hover over Kelly's name, go down to friends, and I can turn off showing newsfeed. I will never again see anything Kelly posts. But Kelly doesn't know that, okay? So I can choose what I want to see from Kelly. I can then, I can go even further by going down to settings, whoops. Oops, oops, oops. Oops. Oh, I hope not. I can go down to settings and I can say, no, I don't want to see what game she plays. I don't want to see all the other stuff she does, but I do want to see you know, photos she posts of her kids, that sort of thing. So I can limit, so I can really limit what it is. You know, there's, I, or, you know, for my family, you know, my nephew's just had a, had a baby, I want to see everything, okay? So um, I go and I choose all updates. So on his name, I don't miss anything. He, all, he will always appear in my news feed. Your how do you turn off the Oh, that's in here. Okay, comments and likes. Oh. Yep. So I know I now no longer see in Ke I no longer see Kelly likes blah because I don't care. <laughs> um, you know, as much as I love her kids, I want to see photos of her kids. I don't care what she likes. <laughs> okay. So, so what she's doing or what she had for breakfast, that sort of thing. So I have a long list of people who I've turned off my I, I have I don't see notifications from them. What I have, though, is a list of people who I... <coughs> pardon me, sorry. So aside from family, my nephew, baby, that's all very nice. Um, there are some really... The, the problem with the way the news feed works is there's useful information out there that gets lost in the wash. Um, so I like the Art Gallery of New South Wales, Arts Hub, NAVA. These are probably all, you know, companies that are familiar to you. The Print Council of Australia and a whole bunch of other organisations. And that is all really good, useful information. I've got, found out lots of opportunities from them. So for Arts Hub, what I've done is I like their page, but I choose Get Notifications. So I get notified, I get a little um, ticker up here, notifying me when Arts Hub posts something, because I don't, because of what I was finding was those galleries that I wanted to follow, those organisations that gave me really interesting, good, useful information were getting lost in my news feed, but now with, that, with choosing get notifications, I can get that, okay? So what Eliza should do is tell all the Facebook fans of Matisse Derivan, you want to choose get notifications. Yeah, you do that. <laughs> yeah. But it got lost in their news feed. <laughs> So it's a vicious cycle for, for a business. It's a vicious cycle of that. Yeah, that's a little bit yeah. different. I'll help you with. I can help you with that. <laughs> okay. So so as I said, I interact with different people different ways. So the other thing I would I'd suggest is that. Um, 
Oh, we've had another glitch. Okay. Another outage. That's all right. Um, what you can also do with Facebook is you can create groups of friends. Um, so you can create... I've created a group called Mates, very original, <laughs> and a, a, a group called Art Interests. So by putting people in those two different groups, I can... Um, show in my news feed just the art interest or just my mates. I can also post status updates. So my friends aren't interested if I'm passing something along from the Print Council, Council of Australia. So what I do is I create a link, you know, I, I create a post about that, but I only share it with my art group, okay? And it, when that comes up, I'll be able to show you how to do that. But you, there are ways to inter, just have the one profile and interact in that way. I'm going to talk about Facebook for forever. That's right. But time is nearly up. Um, so the other things to create, Twitter, forget it, don't worry about it. Ignore it. Pretend it never existed. LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn, you might want to create a LinkedIn profile. It's, uh, it, it's not a very, it's pretty one-way street. A lot of, uh, I've linked with a few gallerists from, from there. Um, it's more professional, it's far more professional than Facebook and it's really just, it's like an online CV, um, job opportunities, that sort of thing. So it's, it's more from the corporate world, people and, and headhunters trail through that a lot. So if you've got curatorial experience, for example, you might put all of that up there and, and you might um, have a look at that. And then the very final thing that I'll just mention briefly, because as I said, time's gotten away, um, blogging. Um, so blogging is, an, is short for web blog, online, um, uh, a web diary, web blog, web diary, yeah. Um, and what you might use blogging for, or a web diary, is you're incredibly narcissistic and you want everybody to know what you're doing. It's, it's just, that's a joke. Um, <laughs> or... Um, it's an online diary. Um, people tend to use blogging for search engine optimization, which is something I mentioned right in the front. Because your website is usually quite static, um, Google, the way Google rankings work, um, they put higher up in the rankings um, websites that change frequently. Um, and so if your website remains, remains static, it, it tends to slide down the, the rankings a little bit. And people use blogging to supplement their website. So the blogging is, is a daily thing, so it changes all the time and it links to the website or it directs people to your website. So people use that to, for search, the term search engine optimization. So I'll just use Matisse as an example. If, um, you know, to drive traffic, to drive web traffic to Matisse's website or to Matisse's products, um, Matisse might have a blog which talks about, you know, flow media, flow um, structure or whatever, you know, whatever it is that they're selling, they talk about that. Um, they talk about it in such a way that um, it ranks highly in the search engine if people are looking for um, face paint um, or things to do with face paint. So, so it's, it's a means of driving traffic to your website and that tends to be what people mostly use blogging for. Um, I a few of my friends use it for um, their thesis, for their master's thesis, thesis, honours year thesis. Honors year thesis. It's, it's a sort of a personal diary, if you like, and it's an easy way if they're out and about and find some information, they can quickly just put it onto their blog. It's more for their personal use, um, or it might supplement, um, it, it might actually supplement their uh, thesis that they hand in because they've got images or something like that on there. So multimedia artists might use it for that. Tumblr is one. Web, uh, WordPress is another. This is, uh, I've got that here. WordPress is a good one. Blogger, blogger.com, Tumblr are the, probably the, the three main ones that people use. Very easy to set up. Um, and you can use those as your artist website if, if you wanted to as, as, as well as a free tool. Um, yeah. So the, usually blogging is, a, is, is supplementary and it's usually used for search engine optimization or just you know, mamamia.com, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, editorials, that sort of, that sort of thing, that's usually what it's used for. 
Um, <coughs> so in this, the lesson. <laughs> um, <coughs> as I said, I could talk a lot more about it, I'm sure. Sorry I went a bit over. Um, but I hope that it was at least a bit useful. Um, <coughs> hopefully demystifies things. Um, happy to take questions now um, or later on if you think of them. Um, or as I mentioned, I'm doing this again in, in March, so if you wanted to come along again, you can do that. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs>